So let's dig into the Texas because you and I, we sat and watched the Texas game. And that keeps being a point of reference, mainly because B. John Robinson is supposed to be the best back in the country. He may be physically the most talented back in the country. I don't think he's a better back than Blake Corum. I think Blake Corum has better vision. Uh, I think he's similar to Donovan in that he he looks for the home run and can get it. But they they're just not as physical and they not they're not as determined a run team talking about Texas as Michigan is. There is no question. I think I think Texas wants to do a lot of stuff, you know, and, and that's the nature of their offense, and that's how they choose to move the ball. But Tex to be a good running team, and this can be your greatest Best friend and worst enemy is you have to be hard-headed. You have to be a guy that says just because they stop us a time or two, that doesn't mean I'm going to stop trying, okay? Texas isn't that type of team. They're, they're, they, if they're not going to pound you on 14 dual plays. They're not going to do it. They have it in their offense, but are they going to call it like Michigan's going to call it? No way. Do they have a power play? Hell yeah, they got a power play. We saw it. It wasn't bad. They ran it once. Okay, they ran it once. Michigan, if they find a little crack in your armor, they are going after it. And they aren't going to give up just because one time they attacked it, it didn't work. You may see that same thing in the second half run 15 times when you may have only saw it early once or twice. They'll go back and make you prove you can stop their bread and butter. I did not see that mentality in Texas. Yeah. They don't have to to Chris Hout's point. Texas's line is not U of M's line, and C Steve Sarkeesian is not Jim Harbaugh, with his how determined he is to establish a physical tone in the game. I think people get fooled out because he was at Alabama at all. You know, this is, he's bringing that Bama style to Texas. I, I think Sarkeesian style was reined in by Nick Saban. Yeah, now, I, I would. Now he's able to do what he wants to do with Texas. Exactly. I, I would completely agree with that. Now, I do see some of the same plays, but I don't see the frequency of finesse plays at Alabama that I see at Texas. I think there's a lot of trick em dick em in Texas, a lot of good stuff, a lot of stuff that, oh man, you fun. It's a blast to tell us straight, okay? But uh, the persistent, I'm going to kick your ass, you know, I'm coming downhill and we're going to, you know, you may beat us. But if you're going to beat us throwing our haymakers, you know, I don't see that thinking. I see more variation, diversity, you know, all that. And guys can win like that. But this team we're playing here, the TCU, didn't see that from Texas. They're about to see it. Dude, just look at the stats in the game, right? So B. John Robinson, I think he would have had like 30 or something yards, something like that. They ran him 12 times in the game in a one position. He's supposed to be his best back in the country, right? That means he's your best football player. This is your quarterback's first game back from injury. You throw it 39 times in a one-possession game and run it 12 with the best back in the country. Now, you I just said the key thing. Wait, slow down. In a what possession game? One possession. A one. Now, see, I could see 39 throws if you're trying to catch up, right? That's happened to me before as a coordinator. I go, oh, God, you threw 42 times ago. Hell, yes, we were down three touchdowns, you know? But in a one possession game that he only carried the ball how many times? 12 times. 12 times. Yeah. See, that tells you something right there. That tells you that they're not bent on running him. They love him. They'll hand it to him. He'll get some tries. But will he ever get into the rhythm that Blake Corum got into or that Donovan Edwards got into? I don't, I don't think so. Not unless they're winning the game by a lot and they're needed to run the clock out. Yeah, man. And and Two of the runs, think about this. So they ran two duo plays in there, at least to my recollection. And they only ran those because they were backed up to the end zone, Al. And they ran them crappy. They ran them crappy. It's like, I mean, you're watching it. They're mistargeting. The linemen are mistargeting. The running back's not reading it right. It's like, it's a play for them. But they, they run the play, but they don't run the play. Yes, like, they don't run there, the play. There, there's a clear difference between that now. Do you? you I hell, I run every play in the world, but I've they run them all good. And when you when to run a play like the duo or run a play like the power, or, you know, run the count. You it's got to be your culture. It's got to be something that you're running, and and you're not discouraged by failure. You know what I mean? You know that okay, they stopped this once. So what? Let's call it again.
And there may be a game you come out of it and you say, oh, God, we never did get going. But you'll never be any good running the ball if you start taking a defeatist attitude as soon as they stop it a couple times.